Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rubbin' is Racing Daily Fantasy NASCAR Show, brought to you by FantasyDonks.com, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know to start playing daily fantasy sports. I'm Sean Big Papa Williams. I'm Jamie Learjet Lear. And we'll be giving you our breakdown on this week's action for the Hollywood Casino 400 from Kansas City. Kansas, unfortunately, not on the Missouri side. Right. But it's still our home track, brother. Right, right. But I blame local politicians for putting it on the Kansas side. It's evil I hear over there. Evil over there. Anyways, <laughs> with that said, guys, uh, there's going to be a lot of action with the, with the race being Sunday, especially after the start of kickoff. Before we get into the track breakdown, Larry and I wanted to talk about what you could expect as an NASCAR uh, Daily Fantasy player this week. I'm guessing all the contests are going to have no problems filling, and we've seen DraftKings bump the sizes of a lot of these contests. Yeah. Um, we're going to see them populated a lot with football players that know absolutely nothing about NASCAR. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of dead money floating around. If if the right picks, if the picks that people uh, that do the work uh, pay off like they should, I think everybody that's a good NASCAR fan and that's followed the sport We'll have a nice payday this week on the backs of the football players trying to get extra action. Oh, definitely, man. I, I definitely, uh, for, for sure this week, um, you know, especially with the race starting just basically about an hour after NFL kickoff goes off. So, um, you know, if you definitely know what you're doing in fantasy NASCAR, um, you have a great chance to, to make some great money this week for sure or possibly win a trip to Miami. Yeah, which we, we're both in that Miami contest. Trying to, trying to get that seat as well, so we encourage you guys to do that. Um, but with that said, let's start talking about the Hollywood Casino 400. Um, unfortunately, Lear and I were not able to broadcast from the track as Kansas we Speedway tried. denied. Yeah, we tried to give you guys a special special present by doing the show out there, but uh, we got denied by Kansas Speedway. So, uh, so hopefully, hopefully next year. Yes, hopefully next year for sure. And hopefully from Miami with us being in the oh, DK yeah. final. <laughs> but with that said, let's talk about the Hollywood Casino 400. Lear, what is the track breakdown on this 1.5 mile bad boy? And All right. Uh, Kansas Speedway uh, was incepted in 2001. Uh, it's located in Kansas City, Kansas, which is about 10 miles west of downtown. Uh, the track is 1.5 miles in length. It's uh, 267 laps to get this bad boy done. Uh, with the number of cautions being around nine. Uh, the temperatures this weekend uh, could increase that number uh, since it will be a little bit cooler than what these guys are normally used to racing on with the higher temperatures, um, but uh, that means less grip on the tires. It's a trial track where uh, turns are 17 to about 20 degrees on the turns, uh, 9 to 11 degrees on the front stretch, and about 5 degrees on the back stretch. Uh, these uh, guys will be carrying lots of speed uh, going into the turns o over 200 miles an hour, uh, which they don't do that on a lot of tracks uh, uh, and on the circuit. So um, should be make for some some fun and interesting turns there. Uh, there's multiple grooves here, so you got a high groove and a low groove. Um, so it should make for some very interesting racing. Uh, the race is tomorrow, uh, Sunday, October the 18th at 2.15 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Uh, so just after about an hour and 15 minutes after NFL kickoff, uh, the weather tomorrow is supposed to be really nice, 70 degrees, uh, mostly sunny with 0% chance of uh, precipitation. Uh, winds will be south-southeast at 15 miles an hour. So I look for a, a good race and um, excited, man, with it being in our backyard. And uh, I definitely will, if I don't watch it because I'll be watching football, but I'll definitely record it and definitely be watching it at some point. Yeah, that's why you got to get permission from the woman to get out with us so we can watch all the games and that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I like this is always a fun racetrack and always exciting racing here. Um, I did notice in practice the drivers are seeming to have a lot of issue with grip and yeah. they seem to be sliding around a little bit. And we've already seen a couple people check walls and have some issues with speed. So, with that said, let's get into the burning rubber segment. Burning rubber, baby. There you go. I was missing it, Lear. I missed it last week with you not here. <laughs> All right, man. So my first burning rubber pick this week is Dale Jr. I, it, he's driving the Halo number five car. It is sweet, by the way. It looks awesome. Um, he's priced 
perfectly, in my opinion, at 8,300 for what he offers you this week. He's been running good at practices, keep, and he keeps getting faster. They made good adjustments on the car, like to speed him up throughout the practices. He qualified 15th, which gives you the ability to get some pass differential, uh, some place differential, and that's always helpful in NASCAR, especially on these speed tracks. To be fair, I, I, I need to disclose this. He doesn't have the track history here, but something right. in my gut is telling me that Dale Jr. gets it done. He's also like well well placed in the chase standings. I just have this gut feeling that he gets it done here this week at Kansas Speedway. Yeah, he's uh, sitting right now currently in the 11th spot, uh, just ahead of Kenseth uh, in the Sprint Cup. Uh, but, no, you're exactly right, man, as far as uh, Earnhardt Jr. goes, as far as his track history here. Um, you know, he's uh, basically never won this race. Yep. Highest he's ever finished was second uh, in 2011. Um, but uh, his average start here is 14th with an average finish of 15.8. So, um, you know, it's one of those where this isn't one of his best tracks. Um, but I, I do know that he said he does like racing here at this track. So, um, you know, maybe he'll break that streak this weekend and uh, bring it home because he's, you know, going to need a win or a really high finish to uh, continue uh, in the Sprint Cup uh, uh, chase for the, the Sprint Cup. So um, look for him to be aggressive this week. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as far as his price point, um, you know, I, I, I definitely uh, wanted to get him on my team, you know, at 8300 which is a great price point for a guy of his stature. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I found some other guys that I liked a little bit more this week. So, no, fair enough. I, I completely understand. With that said, Lear, who's your first guy to burn some rubber this week? My first burning rubber guy this week is Denny Hamlin. Uh, uh Hamlin is currently sitting fourth in the Sprint Cup standings. Uh, and he's already has a win during the chase. Uh, this week at the Hollywood Casino 400, he starts in the fifth position. Uh, in his last four races here at Kansas, he started 10th. 30th, 25th, and 13th with finishes of 23rd, 18th, 7th, and 41st. That 41st finish was due to a crash, um, but back uh, in 2012, he started 4th and finished 1st with 32 laps led. And in his career, he just has that one victory here at Kansas, uh, but his starting position uh, has been his best one since he won that race in 2012. Uh, his uh, price point this week is $9,500. Uh, which is a crazy, crazy price point to me for a guy that's oh, you know, yeah. with his status in the cup. Uh, so I look for him to move up to the front, uh, you know, and today he was uh, the fastest in today's 10 lap average mm -hmm. uh, as far as practices go. So get him in your lineup uh, as he will have a great chance to win, uh, collect a lot of points for laps led and fastest laps, and his price point is criminal. So, you know, you definitely got to put him in your lineup. No, and, and what's funny to me is in practices, Denny was the only one of the JGR teams that didn't seem to have an issue once they switched from qualifying trim to race trim. The yeah. other guys just were not finding the speed, and he was. And yeah. so, you know, I, I really like to play, and I agree with you. He's criminally underpriced for where he's at in the chase standings. For sure. And what, how he's and, been driving. like Yeah, and where he's starting at, which is yeah. huge. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more, dude. And you'll find out later he's on my team, so. I'll just go ahead. Nice. I'll just go ahead and just flat out agree with you there. All right, guys. My next pick to burn rubber this week is a little bit off the radar for a lot of people, and the first reason it's off the radar is because he's out of the chase, and I think that's going to keep him low owned. Uh, and that's why one of the reasons why I'm on Jimmy Johnson. He's ten thousand three hundred, which is super expensive, but I think that's also going to keep him low owned. Right? Like, I'm yeah. getting two factors to keep a guy super low owned. And here's the fun part. He qualified 21st, which means he has all the ability in the world to move up. But he has an amazing track history here. We've got two wins, five top five finishes. He's the king of the 1.5-mile tracks, even if he hasn't been doing it necessarily recently. But right. here's the part that I love. He was the fastest car on the track in practice today. Like, oh, like, and over the long haul, looks to be the fastest car on the track. That gives me pat. That gives me fastest laps, right? That gets me place differential, and once a pit stop happens, probably some lead laps, right? I just love that play, especially if he's going to be low owned, with uh, with him being out of the chase and whatnot. 
No, I definitely agree with you, man. And I, I actually, he was one of the guys I did have on my lineup, but I, I changed my mind. Um, but uh, he does actually, he's got three wins here at Kansas Speedway. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 2008, 2011, and uh, this past one here uh, in 2015 in the spring. Um, but, um, you know, he's got awesome statistics here at Kansas. Uh, average start is 12.6 uh, with 9.1 average finish. Um, you know, and he's got seven top fives here uh, with 15 top tens. And with him in his starting position at 21st, definitely a guy that's going to get you some awesome place differential. Um, but the only thing with him is, obviously, he costs a lot of money. But I totally agree with you that I think he is going to be a loan percentage owned guy because the people are going to look at him and say, well, he's, he's not going to really care about what happens this week because he's out of the, the, the chase now. Um, which I, I could couldn't disagree with more. Uh, I'm with because, you, dude. Yeah. I think he's out to like spoil. I really do. Yes, yeah, he definitely. He wants to. He wants to, you know, be that spoiler guy and and get another victory under his belt here. And here's the other thing: is he'd love to sweep it here at Kansas this year. Yeah, I mean that that would be a, that would be a really impressive feat. So, but I definitely like to play for sure, brother. Uh, sweet, dude. Who's your next burner rubber guy? All right, well, I'm going to actually stick in the same family as you with uh, Hendrick Motorsports, and I'm going to go with Jeff Gordon. Um, I know this is two weeks in a row, and it almost feels like I'm stealing your guy away from you uh, every time I pick him here. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, he cur currently sits seventh in the Sprint Cup standings um, and is still looking for his first victory of the year, obviously. Uh, crazy stat about Gordon here at Kansas Speedway is he won the first two races here at Kansas when it opened up in 2001. And then repeated that back when they were only doing one race a year per uh, per year here at Kansas uh, in 2002. So he won back to back, um, but his price point is unbelievable. It's only eight thousand one hundred, yeah. um, and he and you know he's won three times over his career here, uh, and is starting in a great spot this week in the six hole. Um, his last four races he started fourteenth, thirteenth, fifth, and eleventh, with finishes of third, first. 14th and fourth so he has some great great numbers here he has an average start of 13.1 with an average finish of 9.9 .9. uh, so you can tell gordon really likes racing here at kansas speedway and uh no better way to end his career than you know with a victory here at kansas you know to start it when it incepted in 2001 with a victory and then to end his career with a victory in 2015 so i look for him to be aggressive this week love him at his price point and i uh, hope he gets it done this week and continues to uh be in the chase as well dude you know me i'm a huge jeff gordon fan and everything that you said i hope is true the reason why i'm off jeff gordon this week is for some reason they cannot find speed in that car like yeah. they have had problems through qualifying and all the practices they just they are not able to find the top end speed like they are enough off that it can get ugly and i'm worried that like he's going to as much as I want this dream like season to come true, and as much as I, I'm worried that if he's going to be in a position speed wise, if he unless there's a big wreck that takes out some of the other contenders, that he's going to be with his back against the wall going into Talladega needing a top, top finish to move on. Yeah, and here's the thing with that though, you know, we were just talking about Jimmy Johnson being one of the faster guys in practice. Definitely, you know, they're going to share that information with Jeff Gordon because yeah. he's still oh. a contender in the Cup. So you know that information from Hendrick to Hendrick is going to be passed along. So uh, I definitely see that that they will get together and you know put their notes together and, and definitely give him a competitive vehicle this this uh, weekend. I hope that's the case, dude. I just don't understand why. And I mean, the same thing's been happening with the JGR cars too. I don't understand yeah. why one car on the same team is set up well and working well, and the other cars just aren't there speed wise. And it, it, it this has been a huge, and I'm talking a huge speed gap. When you look at yeah. the numbers, like, but yeah, I, I, I hope you're right. And at his price tag, dude, it's well worth the risk. Oh, no, like, definitely. And, you know. and that's, that's the thing that I love about him most is that he's just so underpriced to 8,100. It just gives you so many more options and a variety that you can do with your lineup. Uh, with sticking a guy of his caliber at that 8,100 uh, $8, price point uh, in your lineup. Yeah, dude. And let's be honest, like out of the entire season, he's, <laughs> he's hurt you to own what, like four times. Yeah, and two of those were because of hit Just problems, unforeseen stuff. Yeah, yeah, like you know, I like he's he's probably the safest driver to roster in NASCAR, and that's why one of the reasons why I love playing Jeff Gordon. 
But with that said, I think we've wrapped up with a lot of the good drivers that are out there for you this week in our Burning Rubber segment. It's time to talk about who's going to the garage. Now, guys, this doesn't mean that we think that the car is actually going to the garage. It may be, though. It, it really might happen. It could also <laughs> mean... It could also mean, though, that the guy's overpriced. It could mean that they're not set to run good. It could also mean that they don't have a good track history, and like we don't think that they'll have a good finish. Or it mean it might mean that they're overqualified. With yeah. that said, I've got a little bit of all of that wrapped up into my play this week. That is who's going to the garage, and this will surprise most of you because you know how much I love Rowdy. Kyle Please. Busch is my going to the garage play this week. He's priced at 10900 which is just way too much. Uh, like, it, uh, like, I'm not sure it's too much money if he, if he has Jimmy Johnson's track history here. Like, right. If, but he has a terrible track history here. Like, Kyle Busch dis, like, dislikes and despises this track. He may like it personally, but his race results show that he hates this track and is not yeah. good at it. Um. I also think this is a situation of him overqualifying. In qualifying trim with no one else on the track, he was able to take third place in qualifying, right? You think that's good. It shows that he's running good. When they were actually on the track in race trim during practice, he's the 30th fastest car on the track. Like, I don't want to deal with a guy that's fallen off that much and is that far behind the pack, like, especially at a 10900 price tag. Like, when we're at a track that has speed in the name, you need to find speed out of drivers. And I just don't want somebody who can't find speed out of their car. And like no, you said, definitely. they might be able to exchange some information and find some. But even if he does get up to where Hamlin's running right now with the way <laughs> Hamlin's car is running, he still doesn't have the track history here to tell me that he can get it done even if he's in the right car. At oh, yeah. Speedway. I mean, as far as Kyle Busch, um, you know, his, his price point is criminally insane. Um, you know, he's right up there, uh, 10,900. And like you said, his history here is horrible. Out of 15 total starts here at Kansas Speedway, uh, he's crashed four times. So, you know, whatever that uh, percentage is, four out of 15, which is not very good. No. Um, but uh, he's only had one top five finish here with no. only three top 10 finishes with his average start of 16.3 and his average finish of 21.4. So that tells you all you need to know right there about uh, about Kyle Busch and Kansas Speedway. Uh, it's just one of those tracks that he uh, historically just does not perform very well. And at his price point of 10900 uh, you're basically taking a huge risk by putting him on your roster. Exactly. And, dude, we see this with Rowdy. It's the way he races. They're just like, what, it's, it's like, at my count, I think there are three tracks that he is just – not good at it. Yeah, and this is definitely one of them. Yeah. And everywhere so, else, the guy's a beast. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it happens. But with that said, Blair, who's your going to the garage guy this week? Well, man, my uh, my going to the garage this week, I'm going to stick within the Bush family <laughs> and go Kurt Bush. Ah, so we're uh, picking on the Bush family. Yeah, we are. The Bush boys are <laughs> not going to perform well tomorrow. Um, Kurt Busch uh, currently sits fifth in the Sprint Cup standings, uh, starts the race this week in the ninth hole. Um, in his last four races here at Kansas, he started 19th, 6th, 24th, and 8th with finishes of 2nd, 29th, 42nd, that was due to a crash, and 8th. So his average starting here is 17.6 with an average finish of 18.4. He only has one top five finish here in 19 total races. His cost is $10,200 which is way too expensive for his history here, and that will cripple your lineup. So my recommendation this week is stay away from Kurt Busch and stay away from Kyle Busch, uh, as Papa just uh, mentioned there too. Yeah, I, I think you are smart to fade the Bush this weekend. and uh, you know, Which is always unfortunate, but yeah. sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, with that said, let's go to the segment where – we're the only the only show in the industry that actually shows you and talks through a lineup that we are submitting for cash in contest. We both are entered in the NASCAR 8K lug nut this week. And this is, the lineup, this is the lineup that you will see in there and uh, the lineup that we're running. And I start off with, as you guys know, the Dale Earnhardt Jr. play. I, um, 
I then added the Jimmy Johnson on it. You know, I'm there. I also told you I had Denny Hamlin. For all the reasons we've talked about earlier, those guys are just solid this weekend. I then went with Kozlowski. He's carrying, in my opinion, he's underpriced at 9700 for where he's sitting in the chase and what he's been able to do recently. I just think that, it, like, and plus, he qualified on the pole. He's looking good. He's one of the faster cars on the track. He hasn't had issues in the practices like all the, like most of the other cars. I just like him for what he is, and I want to get those laps lead points and fastest laps early on the speed track while my other guys are trying to get to the front. Um, do you have any opinions about the Keselowski play there? Oh, I love the Keselowski pick, man. Um, you know, he, the one thing with him is, um, he, he's definitely, uh, got some good history here. He's, he started here 11 times. Um, you know, he has won the race in the past, um, you know, with him being the top qualifier. The only bad part is he didn't get to pick his, um, uh, pits uh, area this week because yeah. due to uh, failed inspection, um, uh, that went to ended up going to Carl Edwards. Um, so I mean that's not a huge thing when it comes to Keselowski, but you know pits uh, pit spots do play a portion into that because that's where they restart from. So, but yeah. um, you know as far as that goes, he he's done really well here. Um, he averaged starts at thirteen point seven and finishes twelve point five. So at least he's finishing positive higher than what he started. Um, and with him starting up front, you know, look for him to stay up front. And he's also, you know, in the, in the, the, the sprint cup, um, you know, currently sitting in the eighth spot. So, you know, I would think that he's going to be pushing the buttons this weekend and trying to go for that victory. So, yeah, I then reach outside of the group of elite drivers, in my opinion, and get some really good value at, at with Casey Mears at fifty eight hundred. In this instance, I think it's a guy that just way underqualified. He's qualified in the 38th position, and as good as we've seen him run all year, there's just something in my gut that tells me there's nowhere for him to go but up. Like yeah. I just like there are tons of drivers that he beats on a weekly basis that are in front of him, and I just think he gets it right. Like I just think they had a bad qualifying session. No, I definitely agree with you on that one, man, and that was definitely in play. I, I had him in my lineup and had to take him out. Um, just due to uh, uh, taking Jimmy Johnson out. So I couldn't fiscally uh, get my other play in there. So I had to take uh, somebody out and I took out Mears. But definitely love that play this week where he's qualified at. And he could easily, easily finish above uh, the 30, 30 mark there. Uh, so it was just a poor qualifying from him. Yeah. Um, but uh, especially to his price point, he can't beat that. Yeah, and like at that price and where he's at, man, like those are the guys that we've seen in the past just skyrocket people up the leaderboards when they move yeah. up. Yeah, and here's the thing, too, is this is something that we have not mentioned or talked about yet uh, here in the video uh, for Kansas this week, but, you know, this is one of those 1.5-mile tracks where it's only 267 laps, so it's not like one of these one-mile tracks where it's 400 laps, you know, 500 laps. This is only 267 laps, so you're going to have less fastest laps, less um, – uh, when it comes to laps led. So you're definitely going to have to get some guys in there that are going to have place differential. And this is one of the guys that could yes. definitely put you over the top, especially where he's qualified at and how much it costs. Right. And because we're going for the premium of laps led early with the Kozlowski <clears throat> play, and we're banking on like some of the other cars moving up and being the faster cars, the, getting another place differential car, in my opinion, is just huge. And that, that, that's, like, that's why I really like that play. Um, the next, I went with our boy Bain, and I I love like the price tag at fifty nine hundred. I love that he's one of our boys. Like you know, and, and to be honest, he's a great guy for what you need in DFS. You need that guy that's not going to get you negative points, which he rarely ever does. He's almost always getting you positive points, and he's almost always consistently around that thirty to fifty point mark. And that's what you want as a that's what you want for DFS. For one of the cheaper drivers and I, I i'm just on board this week because it allowed me to spend up and get kozlowski get uh jimmy johnson get hamlin and get earnhardt jr and uh that and if i have to reach with him and mirrors i don't view that as reaching too much it's not no, like normal guess. where we're casting a yelly or de benedetto like uh play sure. you know no, I agree with you, man. Uh, he might have maybe overqualified, uh, overqualified just a tad with, you know, being at the 19th spot um, yeah. this week. But, you know, at $5,900, I mean, he's definitely going to be a guy that um, he should finish uh, right around where he starts. So he's not going to get you any, hopefully, any negative points. 
Um, but, you know, as far as a guy with, you know, some good history, uh, as far as a Sprint Cup driver, um, like you exactly said, you know, you're not reaching down from one of those uh, bottom of the barrel uh, pump plays uh, with those guys way down at the bottom. Right. But and that's – go ahead. And no, you're right. The concern here is that there's a possible overqualification at 19. But I'm not sure as slow as a lot of these cars look and as good as he's looked that he's not one of the faster cars here. Like, yeah. and just destined to be in the top 20 running for a top 10. And it, maybe this is his breakout race. That would be awesome. Uh, like, you, you know, know I, I would love that. Um, yeah. You know, especially for uh, our boy Adrian Woodruff out there. What's up, Adrian? Yeah, giving you a shout out. <laughs> Can't complain this week, bro. <laughs> exactly. Uh, with that said, dude, I'm, I'm loving my lineup this week. I, I feel really comfortable with it. And. Some weeks you don't because of where you have to reach, and I just don't feel like I'm reaching this week. Yeah. No, and, and here's the other thing, too, is, you know, uh, when we go back to the Bane play real quick, um, he's only raced here twice, which is kind of surprising to me. Uh, I did not know that, um, you know, because he's been on the circuit for quite some time. Um, but with his last one was last year or this uh, spring. Um, but, um, you know, he's definitely, his as far as his average start is 31st, his finish is 26th. So, Definitely some positive, not a ton of history there with two races. Um, but uh, as far as your lineup overall, though, brother, I really like it. You got your main guys up there towards the top um, that should you know, hopefully take it home for you with the other guys down below um, pulling in for that place differential that are low-costing guys that should definitely round up the lineup to hopefully get you to Miami. Fair enough, dude. But I, I have to admit, I'm going through JGR withdrawals, I think. Like, I'm starting to shake and stuff. I don't know what it's like. Not wow. having at least two, if not three members of JGR on my lineup. like Oh, I hear you. I'm, I'll make it up for you this week, I promise. <laughs> All right. With that <laughs> said, give us your lineup, brother. All right, bro. Uh, so starting off, uh, the two burning rubber guys, Denny Hamlin, uh, 9,500, and uh, Jeff Gordon at 8,100. Uh, my next guy, I had to uh, you know, dip down a little bit to pick somebody that I think that you know, is going to have some great place differential. And my pick this week is David Gilliland. Uh, he's $5,700. Uh, he starts this week in 33rd uh, and has a raced uh, 13 times here. So, you know, he's got some good track time here at, at Kansas. Um, so he's got some nice experience on, on that front. Um, on average, he starts 31.5 and finishes 28.5. So this is my pump play this week. He's obviously finishing positive with 13 uh, races here. Uh, and he should finish with some uh, great place differential with starting 33rd. I would look for him to at least finish in the top 25. Um, but it's always going to, you know, with somebody of that magnitude, it's always going to roll down to equipment. So hopefully his equipment will uh, will stay up for him. But uh, that's my pump play this week. Um, next guy, I'm going to stick with a local guy here. He is out of the chase. Um, but uh, with it being his local track, I look for him to uh, definitely – bring the noise this weekend and that's Clint Boyer. Uh, he's 6,600. So great price point for a guy uh, of his caliber. Um, but uh, as far as that goes, uh, you know, he is from a local area here in Kansas and he's starting 26. So he definitely has some good opportunity for some place differential. And it seems been struggling for speed this weekend, uh, but look for him to really try hard to have a great uh, race here, uh, obviously because this is his home track. And, um, you know, I know he's not going to be racing uh, for the same team uh, next year, uh, but uh, look for him to want to finish strong, and uh, hopefully he'll, he'll get it done tomorrow. Yeah. So my next guy, sticking again uh, semi-local, but this guy is, is uh, as I like to put it, hotter than a button, and Papa still wants to know what hotter than a button means. But yeah. um, I'm sticking with Carl Edwards <laughs> at $9,600. Um, you know, he's – one of the hotter drivers on the Sprint Cup, obviously. And this week, he's starting in the second spot. Um, and he should stay up there for the majority of the race. And since, like we talked about just a little bit ago, Keselowski failed four pre-tech inspection points, uh, Cousin Carl got his choice of pit stalls. So he's going to be in the number one stall this week as far as the pits go. So that should give him a little bit more of an advantage um, when it comes to um, having cautions. Um, his cost is still unbelievably awesome. I still don't know how that he is not one of the ones that's more than $10,000, but whatever, DraftKings, I appreciate the, the love on there. Um, and, uh, you know, this is also considered his home track as well, even though he's from Missouri, he's from Columbia, um, but that's not too far away from Kansas City here. So 
Um, and he's never won here uh, at Kansas, which is, you know, completely shocking, um, which I couldn't believe that when I pulled up the, the stats that he had never won here uh, at Kansas Speedway. Um, but uh, look for him to stay strong this week because, you know, starting up, up the front there, you know, he should stay up for the front, get some fastest laps, uh, laps led. Um, but his best finish that he's had here was, was second place, and that was back in 2008. So look for him to uh, want to take it home here uh, uh, and get it done here at Kansas Speedway and move up within the chase as well. So Yeah, no, Carl, Cousin Carl was the one player that I did feel like I was leaving off my lineup. Uh, I, I I love the way he usually runs this track. He loves placing top five here. Like you said, he hasn't won, but yeah. he might be due. And his, he's just criminally underpriced. Like that argument. Yeah, like, that's... We've been saying it for, like I feel like, two months now. And yeah. it, he's still just way too cheap. You know, yeah, I, and the crazy part is, you know, out of 16 starts here, he's got top, uh, six top fives, which is 37.5%, and 11 top tens. So that's 68% that he's finished within the top ten. Now, granted, with him starting in the second spot, that's not going to do well for you as far as place differential if he just has a top 10 finish. But, you know, you're banking on this guy to lead a lot of laps and also mm -hmm. have some uh, fastest laps. So um, definitely some, a lot of positives around around Carl Edwards oh, yeah. uh, this week. No, I – and like I said, dude, it was just a, like, like – we went the opposite way. You didn't want to be on – you couldn't find the money to have Johnson and Mears. And so I went that route, and like that's how I couldn't have the money to fit Ed because of Carl in my lineup. So <laughs> you know, I, I, we basically hedged each other without knowing it there. Sure. <laughs> but with that said, guys, um, I got one more pick. Oh yeah, one you more do. Pick here. Sorry, man, uh, I forgot. My, my last driver. I uh, can't leave this guy off because I think he definitely has a chance of uh, winning the race this week. Um, but uh, Matt Kenseth at the ten thousand oh. five hundred uh, price point. He currently sits 12th um, in the in the chase, uh, and his last uh, in the Sprint Cup standings due to his crash last week at the Bank of America 500. Um, he starts this week at Kansas tomorrow in the 11th spot, uh, and you know he wants to have a good showing this week because of that crash last week and having that fourth oh, yeah. finish. Even with him being the last guy uh, on that bubble there for uh, for the chase, so you know he wants to stay up there and stay in the mm -hmm. chase. Uh, he's had a great year this year, and I look for him to have a nice comeback race this week. And uh, I just, you know, I had to pick him be between him and Jimmy Johnson. I really like Jimmy Johnson's history here at, at Kansas Speedway, but I had to give the, the little bit of the nod to uh, Matt Kenseth uh, just because he's in the Sprint Cup. And I just have the feeling, obviously, with him starting higher uh, than Jimmy Johnson, um, I just think he, he's really going to have a chance to be up there and to uh, win this race this week. So, uh, no, I, I it's I like to pick. It's an interesting pick. Um, I. I'm just thinking that more people are going to be on on him because of his chase oh, yeah. standings. No, I, like, I that's you. why I swerved. But like, I totally get why. You, like, the arguments both ways like work. That's the joy of DFS sometimes, right? Like, there yeah. there can be two right arguments, and you just have to settle down, or maybe you have to play both lineups. You know, uh, sure. But with that said, boys and girls, we're gonna wrap up this week's Rubbing His Race and Daily Fantasy NASCAR show. Thank you, as always, for tuning in and watching. Lear and I love doing this for you all. And oh, yeah. it, it's a blast. Remember to like, favorite, share, um, and subscribe, uh, subscribe on to the YouTube channel. Why is that the, always the one I leave off? I, I, I don't, don't know, know, man. It's just habit, <laughs> you know? But uh, also, too, for you guys out there as well that are DFS uh, degenerates, uh, we also have our uh, Ultimate Fantasy Football 3-Way uh, Fantasy Show. Uh, it is also up on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and FantasyDonks.com, of course. Yep. So uh, make sure to check that out for your picks tomorrow as well. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as NASCAR goes, definitely loving uh, loving the chase. It's been real interesting so far. And uh, look forward to having a great race tomorrow at Kansas Speedway uh, here at our home track in Kansas City. Well, that said, boys and girls. Lear and I have some Royals game to watch. Like that's right. Uh, we gotta get we gotta get the we gotta get it up, done so we can get back to the World Series this year. So, all but right. uh, go Royals, and <laughs> I hope you guys all have a great weekend. And yep. uh, thanks for the love. And if we're not making any money, we hope it's you. But really, we hope it's us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Later, y'all. Have a good week. Have a good one.